Uh, welcome back guys. Uh, apologies I haven't been around again. I decided to have a pretty quiet Anzac day followed by a few quiet days. Um, today we're looking at Norway, the Royal Marines Rite of Passage by Access. Um, they've done some good stuff. The last video we did actually on the 2nd Rifles Battalion. Um, they're under the BFBS Creative banner. So I'll put that uh, link down in the description as always. Um, it looks pretty cool. It's sort of about Royal Marines, Arctic warfare training, something I've had no experience with at all. Um, so yeah, let's suss it out. Alright guys, before we get stuck into it, I'd just like to say thanks to uh, Shifty or Paragim Shift. I'll, um, I'll put his name down below as well. Uh, he has provided me with the funds for a green screen. So I don't have to worry about any of this crap anymore. Um, let's get started with this video anyway. You'll find little sign of life in the Norwegian mountains. It stays dark for months. Mm. And temperatures plummet to minus 35 degrees. Okay, wow. So I think the coldest night I ever had was either at Pakapanu or Shoalwater Bay. I think it was like minus three degrees outfield. And that was cold, let alone minus 30. Yeah. Um, I don't know if any Australian units act actively trained for this other than special forces, but um, yeah, crazy. Landscapes like this want to hurt you. They want to kill you. Mm -hmm. Unless, of course, you're trained to thrive. The Royal Marine Commandos are Stop the it there quickly again and say that um, a lot of the environments that Royal Marines, specialised units, special forces training, even just infantry training, are sort of adverse environments, whether it be jungle, the Arctic, the desert, all very harsh conditions where the average person probably wouldn't be able to cope. Um, this little bit of training really helps. The UK's Arctic warfare experts. They've spent over half a century honing their unique skill set hundreds of miles inside the Arctic Circle. Cool footage. A deployment to Norway is often seen as a rite of passage in the Marines. The making of a bootneck. Bootneck. All right, since I said bootneck there if you haven't uh, checked him out go check out bootneck gamer he's an actual former royal marine commander commando sorry um a lot of experience there i'll link his video as well um but yeah check him out he's a good mate of mine and a bootneck i spent four and a half years as a marine and never got a chance to visit norway but i'm about to spend a week here to see what all the buzz is about Let's get stuck in. Bootneck said the same thing, Bootneck Gamer, that he never got to go to Norway. I think he was more involved in um, the ready response sort of commando group. Different sort of, different uh, commando elements do different stuff as far as I know. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. That would be cool to be outfield to see the, the Northern Lights. The Marines come to Northern Norway to take part in exercise Cold Response, an annual exercise involving 35,000 troops Oof. from 28 Oof. countries designed to test NATO's ability to protect Norway in case war breaks out in the region. But before the Royal Marines take part in the joint exercise, they need to learn the basics. I've seen this and before, that responsibility yeah. falls on the shoulders of the mountain leaders. Royal Marines are set apart from the, the rest of the British military, mainly by the fact that we do Arctic training. This is a huge beast and it consumes quite a, a large portion of our, our training year, even just to beat up to you know, the mountain training in, in Scotland uh, and then a three month deployment to, to Norway. And it's the fact that it is just so difficult to, to operate out here. It sets mm. you up for, for operations all, all over the world. Probably one of the most difficult areas he could operate in, if you think about it. Um, 
there's various like, desert and jungle isn't nice, but yeah. Well, the harshest of, of conditions. It is probably the harshest. These of conditions. guys are a specialist branch of the Royal Marines. A cut above the rest when it comes to soldiering in extreme environments. We made it out here in time to see the Royal Marines consolidate their skills through live That's fire cool. exercises involving some big weapons. Ooh, what are we going to see? Soldiering is tricky business. You've got the enemy to worry about, your weapon system, fire support, malleting a position. But in the cold, I imagine it's a different ball game. Mm. Well, then, coach, what's going to happen is Shirley Company will leave the hospital. Even the basics of soldiering, coming in and cleaning your weapon, different oil would have to be used. Um, so many things that I, yeah, it's definitely for a specialised unit. Position, and then we'll move around on the Viking ski already. They'll get to a drop off point. Once they're at that drop off point, they'll convert to their skis. From there, this is the kind of training, though, that a soldier dreams of. From there, they'll move around this feature and they're heading towards the tank hole. So really dumb of me. What is the name of this vehicle? I cannot remember it. Um, it looks very versatile. Um, I know they were in Afghan at one point. Javelin. $60,000 shot there. Great cinematography. The Royal Marines are also the UK's amphibious specialist. This means that most of the time, Wherever you find the Marines, you'll find boats. Right, so we do have amphibious specialists in the Australian Army. Uh, it's a relatively recent thing to RAI amphibious. Um, they carry out most of the training for other regiments when they go on their uh, amphib cycle. We've been invited to watch 539 Assault Squadron conduct some of their amphibious drills. And we get to have a ride on one of those. Nice. We're about to slip on one of the orcs. We're going to be following on as they practice their break contact drills out in the open ocean. That's pretty cool. That's as marine as you can get. As we're sat here, we're the enemy craft now. You've got the, uh, the boat group coming in, the fire support vessels. Uh, closest to the threat on the left hand side with the big uh, the big guns on, on the point fives. They'll see the enemy threat which is us and they'll um, they'll sweep off away from the target with the guns pointing to the rear engaging the target with the troop carrying vessels furthest away from the threat. Something I've never seen or done before. That's another 50. Another 50 cal there. Yeah, there we go. They've got 50 cals mounted to these boats, that's pretty cool. Um, shooting blanks by the looks of it. The temperature and the weather, obviously the biggest challenge out here, uh, especially out on the water, because we've got the wind chill, as mm. well as obviously the, the water the that freezes instantly terrible. as well. And if we're he heading off down, as it, down the fjord at boat group at like 30 knots into a 30 knot wind, it can quickly become down to minus 60 plus. The role has carried through since the Second World War, where groups of Royal Marines ran ashore 800 kilometers south from here at Namsus. Just as it was during the First World War, Norway was neutral, hoping to stay out of what was rapidly evolving in mainland Europe. Nazi Germany had other plans. In 1940, they launched attacks from the air, sea, and land. Norway's military was underfunded and weak because of its pacifist policies. They needed help from their allies, and fast. The Royal Marine Commandos were sent in to recapture key ports around Norway and prevent a German advance north. Crawling undetected through the bleak North Sea, ships of the Royal Navy steam silently toward two Nazi-held Norwegian islands. Aboard are commandos, the hard-hitting British blitz troops. 
All night, hand grenade fuses are set. He's setting fuses by himself. Important in all of this was the port at Namsus. The Allies saw the port as a good spot to land troops and set up logistics, crucial to the successful defeat of the Nazis in Norway. Under the command of Captain Ed... going to pause it and say, I don't think this operation was successful. That's from memory. Um, let's, let's see. A small team of Royal Marines arrived ashore, eventually leading to the successful occupation oh. of Namsus and the seizure of bigger ports along the coast. There we go. And so, the bond between the Royal Marines and the Norwegians was forged. Bootnex do see Norway as Bootnex. a rite of passage. Uh, the training that we do here is some of the hardest across the, oh. the whole of the world. I have to go back. That sums up the training pretty bloody well. Look at this poor guy. He has. He's carrying the Mark 58 GPMG with his pack on in the snow with skis. Bugger that. And at the moment, you know, we've maybe got between 50 and 70% of the whole force trained in, in Arctic warfare. So for those that haven't done it, they, they do feel like they're, they're missing out. All right, so for anyone that hasn't been living under a rock, that's a javelin. Um, to live fire one of those things is like 40 to 60 grand. I never got the chance to actually shoot one. Um, I did get some sort of qualification on it, but it wasn't fully quelled. Yeah, that's what's ripping apart tanks at the moment in the Ukraine. There's clearly a rich history, but what is it about Norway which makes Royal Marines tick today? Every year, the Royal Marines visit their Norwegian neighbours, maintaining their cold weather skills whilst demonstrating their commitment to one of their closest NATO allies. But I've learned that the going isn't easy. Of course, Norway isn't the only place in the Arctic that British forces will deploy. There are other places just as hostile and just as significant. All right, guys, so it wasn't a long video, but um, pretty interesting, had some history in there as well. Just showed the conditions that they do operate in. Um, and they still use all the weapon systems that you'd expect they'd be using. Pretty cool. Um, if anyone's done any Arctic warfare training, let me know. And yeah, that's short video for today, but we'll have some more coming up very soon. Cheers, guys.